I want to show you something that is so it's it's so appalling and funny at the same time. You know, when people talk about Syria, they claim that oh, it was a civil war, or it is because it's still ongoing. It's a civil war. It's purely a civil war. Bashar al-Assad is a brutal dictator who dropped barrel bombs, you know, and used chemical weapons to kill uh, civilians with no military or strategic value, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? And when you tell them, well. No, uh, Israel is helping Al-Qaeda in Syria. Uh, uh, Britain has special forces there. America is stealing oil. Uh, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, all of these countries like the EU, they, they have crushed Syria with sanctions and armed uh, uh, groups there and, and you know, finance terrorist groups. In Syria, they helped create ISIS. They, they gave rise to these conditions. When you tell them this, when you tell them the truth, the truth, they don't want to hear it. No, 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 I won't hear it. Now, I want to show you a tweet, which is really funny, because this guy over here, a, a, a rather repulsive uh, uh, swamp creature called Charles Lister, who is, who is basically someone living in the uh, 19th or early 20th century, who thinks that, you know, he, he can go around, um, uh, you know, telling countries in the Middle East what they should be, how they should be, and... Um, you know, here he is visiting um, uh, the uh, Syrian, the so-called Syrian embassy uh, in in uh, Qatar, which is funny because it's obviously not a Syrian embassy. The flag is the flag of the Syrian opposition, and what makes it so so funny is that um, you know it's it's uh, the the flag of the French mandate in Syria, so it's really a colonial flag. In in a tweet, he kind of admitted by accident. This guy, the same one, he accidentally admitted the truth. Which, if you had, you know, challenged him with this, otherwise he would, you know, he would have, he would have not, um, uh, he would have not revealed. So Joshua Landis was saying down here where my mouse is. He said U.S. policymakers had decided by 2013 that they did not want to see the Syrian military destroyed because they feared that the opposition was dominated by radical Islamists and the country might fall apart. And then Charles Lister, the swamp creature, answers him. Ah, yes, of course. That must have been why the United States initiated in 2013 its biggest rebel proxy assistance, re uh, assistance effort in decades, a program that lasted until mid-2017. The covert program was worth billions of dollars, coordinated with 14-plus countries and worked with 80-plus um, uh, free Syrian army groups across Syria. Yes, we've been saying so. <laughs> How nice of you to join us. How ni nice of you to join us, oh boy. Yes, are you with us, Charles? Ch I think Charles is having some issues with uh, you know time dilation. Thank you. Yes, this is exactly what we've been saying. Uh, you, you can uh, uh, call it a, a, a covert program. It certainly is. It's also known as coup attempt, right? It's, it's a failed coup attempt. It's also known as the billion dollar uh, war. The CIA, uh, I think they spent, is one, it's one of the most expensive coup attempts in history, right? So they spent uh, billions as, as Charles uh, is, uh, <laughs> is forced to admit in an, in an obvious own goal. I mean, it's so funny. It's so funny and also sad, right? Because he thinks that, oh, well, you know, this is a good thing, right? Yeah, it's really half the population dispersed. Uh, you know, the Caesar Act sanctions, there's no fuel, there's no food. Yeah, yeah, well done. What, what, an, what a marvelous revolution. A revolution, a civil war, is when you have 14 plus countries, uh, you know, sending billions of dollars. I agree, yes, what a revolution. That's why it worked, right? That's why Assad is gone. <laughs> so it's kind of funny because this guy, he just can't grasp that, oh, this shit failed. And, and I wish he would even grasp that, right? Because acknowledging uh, that this took place and destroyed the country is something you will never hear him say, right? Or others like him say. But um, there, there, is, there is no uh, coup. Uh, there's only a destroyed Syria thanks to him, right? And his efforts because he's not just some commentator. This guy actually, you know, he went and, and tried to help build uh, some pathetic uh, alternative Syrian government. In other words, you know, a coup. With, with these people who nobody recognizes. Like, th this, this embassy is of a non-existent government. It just doesn't exist. Even in Saudi Arabia right now, because Saudi Arabia, you know, they, they've normalized uh, uh, ties with Syria. There's a rapprochement. Saudi Arabia and Saudi Arabian media have stopped even using this word regime. They stopped talking about Syria the same way. And of course, most important of all, you had Bashar al-Assad, 
the Syrian president, in Saudi Arabia for the first time since the war started, just the other day at the Arab League meeting, which of course, um, you know, I commented on and briefed you all on. So, these people were expecting that Saudi Arabia would normalize ties with Israel, you know, after the Abram Accords. <laughs> and the exact opposite has happened. As a matter of fact, uh, there's no, no hope. There's not even a, you know, a, a, a glimmer. There's not even a sliver of hope of that happening. And now Saudi Arabia has normalized ties with Syria, normalized ties with Hamas. You had a Hamas leader in Saudi Arabia visiting in, last month. Uh, Saudi Arabia is normalized with Yemen and with Iran and going the complete opposite direction. After all, who would want to be involved with, you know, morons like this and snakes like this or the Israelis uh, who, you know, occupy Syria, but we don't talk about that. Or the Americans who occupy Syria, which we also don't talk about that. But it's really funny to see how, how they've, they've utterly failed. I, you know, I say funny, but obviously it's very sad. They've killed a lot of people. But really, it's kind of pathetic, right, that um, uh, they, they use this colonial flag, like from the, f the, 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 the French colonial times, like when Syria had a, had a fake uh, uh, country that was basically, you know, a protectorate, in other words, a colony. Why would you bring out this rag from the dustbin of history? Why would you pick that as the flag? I mean, it's, they say that the Syria's current flag is, is, you know, the Assad regime flag. It, it's, it's not even... Dude, Bashar al-Assad did not even exist when... <laughs> his, his, even his father was not president when this became Syria's flag. You see, Syria and Egypt became one country, um, you know, uh, and, and there are problems with that because of, you know, Egypt having a bit too much control. The idea was Arab reunification, which is a great idea, but um, in any case, you know, uh, it didn't work, but they became one country, and they adopted the Syrian flag. Now, Egypt, you know, the, the Union broke apart and Egypt changed its flag, but Syria kept the flag. This is just how it's been. So, uh, Syria has the flag of Arab nationalism, of pan-Arabism, and it's something to be extremely, extraordinarily proud of. Why would you dig up this garbage relic, this, this absolute, you know, toe rag of a, of a so-called flag and hoist that and, and, you know, wave that around? I mean, just... Have some self-respect, man. Don't come here and talk to me about, oh, democracy in Syria and, and oh, we're going to get rid of Assad and have a better country with this thing. Jesus Christ. I mean, work, you could at least work on your marketing, you know, instead of... <laughs> I mean, they did. They tried to portray Al-Qaeda as, you know, freedom fighters and so on. But they didn't bother changing this rag. Jesus. Anyway. Anyway, I thought I'd just mention this own goal here where you have somebody involved in regime change in Syria accidentally admitting it because of frustration... Um, uh, you know, and scoring an own goal.